a blind step blaster. Okay, you come across and you point your toes. Posture, I have to be prepared to make my kicks. Both sides. I want to blade across it, doing a, like a head parry, coming up with a rib kick. So what I do is I bring my knee up, see that? And I angle my knee down, and then from that I extend it to a chop down. Hey guys, Sensei George here. Today, we're going over round kicks. Specifically, the basics, the drilling, and the application. So today, I have with me Sir Kirk Knight of Green. Uh, you guys go ahead and check out his channel. Uh, he does HEMA and some other stuff. So what we're doing today is going over round kicks. And first, we're going to go over the kihon, the basics. Yeah. So the way that we train this is that the opponent comes in for a stepping punch in Nimpo. So we wait for that stepping punch to come through. We go to the outside. We raise our leg up. We blast through the ribs with our shin. And know that my knee's bent a little. It's because I want to go through the target. So one more time. Here, offline, step, blast through. Yeah. And that is the uh, basic. So I'm going to do it one more time with ki now. Hey! And you blast the ribs. Hopefully you break a floating rib, and then it goes into the lungs for self-defense situation, and then you can get away for defense. But that is the historical application of the round kick through Nippo Taijutsu. So some key points to uh, be focused on are the kicking leg and my standing leg. The thing to point out for the kicking leg is that I point my toes when I'm kicking with my shin. Okay? So I come across, raise up, extend my toes out depending on where I'm kicking. If I'm kicking to the ribs, it's extended. If I'm kicking to the thigh, it's coming in, it's extended and I'm chopping down a little. So that's a very important point is that I point my toes when I'm kicking with my shin. When I'm doing a round kick and I kick with the ball of my foot, which is very important, you gotta curl your toes back. Because if you don't, you're likely to break them. You're gonna be hitting harder su uh, surfaces. So when you go to kick, as hard as it is in shoes, practice it anyways. You come across and you point your toes no matter how you're coming through with it. Okay? You point them. And that will expose the ball of your foot so you can make the most impact. Now the difference between the two strikes is that when you come across using your shin, it's going to be like a baseball bat. It's a wide surface area. You're more likely to hit your target and it has a lot of force behind it. But then when you switch and use the ball of your foot, it's like a hammer. Yeah? So the hammer is going to have a lot of force behind one small point and cause more damage in a precise area. So you have the baseball bat and the hammer. Depends on the subject and what you're trying to use it in. So that is the kihon of the kicking leg. Now to go over the standing leg. If I go to and try to round kick someone with this leg stationary, I'm going to be cutting across myself. And it's actually a bit painful because I'm rotating over that joint and it's not moving naturally. It has a lot of energy and it's stopping because this is standing still. What you should be doing is letting this foot turn to face the other direction, which will open your hip up and allow you to kick and continue to come out of it. Yeah? So when I go to kick, you'll see that this foot, by natural means, will begin to rotate. Even though the whole foot is on the ground, it rotates to let my body properly chamber that energy, which is very important for delivering a round kick. And again, if you go like this, it'll stop yourself. Now let's go over the recovery, also a very important skill. If I round kick someone, often enough, people will ride that to come back around in a circle. So if I kick someone and it was a light impact and I hit them, I'm gonna come back around and face them. Now, however, if it was a hard impact and I hit them, my leg's likely to bounce back. I go to kick their leg and bounce back because they're still there and I couldn't go through them. But notice my foot, it still moves. It spins, it turns, and it comes back. One more time, it turns back, very important. Now is the way that I love to do it. I'll hit someone with a round kick and then I pull that foot back and stay ready for a fight. So I come in one more time, kick, and I stop at the same side. And I like to do that because A, I don't like to give anyone my back. If you go like this, there's a short second where they can rush in and come in for you. That's when a lot of people do spinning back fists, I know, and I like that too. But I like to limit the amount of time in which I give someone my back. So I'll strike and get back in a fighting posture. Or I'll hit and move forward for the next few strikes. Also a very good combo, okay? So, now that you've seen the key home and basics, we're gonna go over some drills that you guys can do to make your kicks better. So, what I actually have is Kirk with a uh, kicking target. So he has a kicking target. Uh, what this is focusing on is your hand and foot coordination. Okay? Uh, Hand-eye, foot coordination. It all goes together. 
So in this instance, I can see where this is. I would use this as my gauging so I know where my uh, contact can be made. And then from that posture, I have to be prepared to make my kicks both sides and be mindful of if I'm kicking with the ball of my foot, turn my toes. And if I'm kicking with my shin, you wanna make sure your partner holds it at an angle with his arm. So that when you come across and chopping down, you don't accidentally chop into his uh, arm as well. So I didn't come across with my shin for that same thing. And this is a passing target. So you see me spinning around. Now, train in doing it so that you can stop. So I hit, I bounce back. Hit, bounce back. Paying attention. Yeah. And it's a little bit easier when you use the ball of the foot because you can strike and reset a little bit easier. When you use the shin, you're carrying through a little bit more and it will bring you around a little bit easier. But when you're hitting someone, you'll be able to hit and come back down a lot easier. Now I see you, I, you guys see me doing a lot of kicks head height. It's not all that practical. It has a higher risk in self-defense scenarios. However, if I can kick someone in the head that's this tall, I can kick their knees confidently a lot. So this is someone that like, you know, a foot taller than me, uh, which is more likely to happen because I'm a pretty short guy. So you hold the same, same level. So same thing, I wouldn't be able to do this kick if I didn't turn my rear leg. So I make sure to do that, and I can still hit it either way. One more. So that's a good skill to practice on because once you feel confident kicking high, you can kick low all day. And of course I did my share of kicking low before I could kick high. So you wanna have this target at the same level of things that you would kick. So at this time, his knees are my target. And I use the ball of my foot, moving off line kicking. Moving off line kicking. Yeah. And I work on my distancing the whole time. I don't treat it like he's just a static partner and not worry about him coming in to hit me. I hit, I move. I get my hands ready in proper distance. Hit, move, hit, move. Yeah. So those are proper drills that you can use for uh, training your round kicks. So now we're gonna go into application. So you can go to put that target off to the side. So for application, what we're gonna be going over are rib kicks, head kicks, and knee kicks. All applicable in a self-defense situation. So we're gonna start off with the rib kicks. So we can do the rib kick from the most common punch that a lot of people talk about is the cross. The cross being where no one steps. So when he comes in for that punch, I wanna blade across it, doing a, like a head parry, coming up with a rib kick with my shin. So one more time. Slip kick, okay? And notice what I'm doing with my leg as well on that recovery, because I know I can't bring my leg through him. I place it down and face him so I can follow up from that position or I can escape. So one more time, he comes up for that punch. I slip, strike, maintain this contact. If you were to try to rush in, I can feel it. If I just turn, he can come and get me. But with this contact, I can control the scenario from that posture there. Now, we're gonna go into head kicks. You guys heard me before, head kicks are more risky, but they're proven to work. Go type in head kick KOs, Taekwondo, etc. you will see it. Reason being, they don't expect it coming, and the strikes that you don't expect coming are the ones that knock you out. So uh, you actually wanna be on this side uh, for filming this. So, same posture, opponent comes in for a cross punch. From here, they're more focused on what's high, this is good. I want to have my hands up so he can have something to focus on and see some eye contact. Have him a little bit scared. And then from here, if you look back down at my rear leg, this is where it's already chambered. I'm going to raise my knee up and just let it extend out into the head. So one more time. Moving offline, let it slip right up in there. It will make contact if you train it. So that's a really good aspect about it, is that you can come in where you seem close. I'm going to kick again. I punch again. I'm in this close. Most people wouldn't expect to see a kick coming from this uh, level. You can come down to the leg, this is great. But guess what, that also brings them lower for you to do another kick. So that's a good position to be able to do head kicks. And uh, just to bring that about one more time, say he throws one more cross. I come in for the cross, I strike him in the face of the elbow, and I roll him over, okay? Most people say, you know, head kicks, they're standing, they're doing this. For my head kicks, I like to bring them to my level and blast through. 
So don't get so stuck on a head kick has to be where they're standing up naturally waiting for something to happen. You could bring them down and still kick them in the head from a low height. Let's keep that in mind. Now the most effective version of the round kick is actually to the knees. Reason being is because you can do them from close quarters and from mid distance. So say we're in a mid distance situation right now. I want to wait till his weight is loaded on his leg. If I kick him when his weight is on the rear leg, what will happen is that the leg sort of can bounce. So if he comes to kick mine, I can like drag it and move it around. It doesn't take a lot of damage. But say I, I know he's jabbing to try and get my face and judge his distance. So when I put my face there and cause him to reach out for that jab, his weight is then on that leg. The moment that his weight is on that leg, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back and blast that leg out before he has the time to adjust. So I'm waiting for that to come in, jump back, and do it as he extends. I don't wait for the jab to come out, for him to reset, and then come in because his weight is off of it. I wait for it to come in, escaping the jab, and kicking simultaneously. So that is a very effective way of doing the round kick in a self-defense situation in mid-distance. Now let's talk about close distance, because this is where it gets brutal. So say we get uh, close up in Kamuch and we're fighting for postures, we're trying to punch one another in the head, and from there we're like swinging around and we're getting into this situation right here. But we're so focused on the top game, we forget about legs. So this is where it comes in handy. Uh, you can look down now. Uh, from this posture here, our legs have some really good distance. All I want to do is choose one. I'm going to go for this side because it's closer. And what I do is I step past, just like I was doing the rib kicks before, loading my weight onto another leg so that I can chop into the thighs and throw round kicks the whole way through until I can get him turned around into an advantageous position and go on from there. So on close quarters and dealing with the angle of the kick is very important. Because when we're this close, again, I have to make sure it's a chop. If I come in with this horizontal, it's going to be a little bit harder. And if his leg is forward, so switch your legs, coming in with this is going to be really hard because now I, can, I can't develop as much power. So what I do is I bring my knee up, you see that, and I angle my knee down, and then from that I extend it into a chop down, and this lets me get him where I need him to. So when we're in this position here, he's going to be trying to like move me around and whip me. Uh, when I feel that, I want to chop into his leg so he can't continue walking and whipping me as he wants. This can also move him into an advantageous position. So I will show you one takedown to do with this. So he's whipping me around, we're trying to punch one another in the face and maintain that distance. So once I find out a leg positioning, you can go from the inside or outside. So I blast to the inside of the leg. That gets him facing outwards. So from here, I circle over, I get a guillotine, I clap both my hands together, and then from here, I squat and I lift up. And that's the choke. Yeah. So from that point, all you have to do is ride it out, he'll run out of oxygen, and you let go and you disappear like a ninja. Okay. Cool. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. You're watching What Would Ninjas Do? I'm Sensei George. Domarigato gozaimashita.